the ETFs themselves represent um, regulatory clarity for Bitcoin as the institutional grade crypto asset. I think that's a very important thing. Uh, I think secondarily, the ETFs represent an on-ramp for institutional money and they open up a gateway between a hundred trillion dollars or more of institutional money and Bitcoin. I think uh, the third thing is uh, they have sparked this price action and as Bitcoin moves back toward its all-time high, they have generated an extraordinary amount of media coverage and Wall Street awareness and Bitcoin benefits from the awareness um, of the asset class because as of now, 99% of the mainstream investors really have uh, an incomplete understanding of Bitcoin. And the, and the best thing that we could do is just build awareness that it is an asset class. Wait a minute, everyone. Welcome to Bitcoin Zella, your platform for daily cryptocurrency analysis and news. Our mission is to keep it simple. Bitcoin Zella offers engaging information that is easy to understand. Our analysts keep their eyes on the latest news to provide valuable insights via email. Don't miss out on this opportunity. Join our community of 10,000 subscribers and experience the new edge with Bitcoin Zella. Subscribe now. Michael Saylor will share his insights on How do the ETF represent regulatory clarity for Bitcoin as the institutional grade crypto asset? How do the ETF open up a gateway between trillions of dollars of institutional money and Bitcoin? How do the ETF spark the price action and the media coverage of Bitcoin? Let's join Michael Saylor in this interview about these topics and more. That is one of the surprising consequences. We thought that maybe Bitcoin was a competitor to gold, but it's actually run up the leaderboard and now it's it's starting to nip at the heels of the S&P 500 index ETFs. Um, if you're looking for an analogy, um, imagine a business... Uh, without a website, you know, it was uh, pools of money uh, without uh, an ETF ticker were mutual funds. So if we look at the history of investing, we kind of went from it, buy the stocks individually to trust a money manager with a mutual fund and the mutual funds made fidelity. And then um, 30 years later, the ETF came along and it was and a universal API that you could use to trade a mutual fund. So in the mutual fund world, it takes you a few days or a week or two weeks to set up an account. And it takes you a few days to move your money in the mutual fund. And it, you know you have to redeem your money and it takes you a week to get your money out. And so it was a very slow, low frequency relationship. And the typical investor is gonna just do business with one company like Fidelity. When the ETFs came along, you could have any stock trading app and you could trade from one fund to another fund. You could trade you know, in and out of funds six times a day. You could every day say, well, I wanna buy this thing from Fidelity, this thing from BlackRock, this thing from Vanguard. And you could put those, those funds in the same watch list as your Apple stock or your Google stock. So it's, it's, it's kind of the same impact the internet have, which is, oh, there's a, a retail store, there's a restaurant, what's the website? Like, I wanna say, let's go to a restaurant, you go check out the website, it says, this is where it is, this is how long it is, these are pictures of it, this is the menu of it. Now, imagine I tell you, uh, we're gonna meet at a hotel or in a restaurant and there is no website. Yeah. You're like, no. <laughs> like, I mean, your, your reaction is, uh, so, so how am I supposed to figure it out? Like, well, you get on a plane and you fly there and you walk through the door, you ask for the menu. And, it, and at that point they tell you what it is. You think that just seems so 20th century. So you now you're laughing, but like you can't do business without a website. The website is the universal API of information. That ETF ticker is the financial API for an investor. Bitcoin has been trading above the $67,000 mark with average network transaction fees experiencing a 288% increase from $3 to $11.64 since February 25, 2024. Meanwhile, 
BTC has consistently stayed over the $60,000 level for eight straight days, elevating the daily value of one petahash per second p /s, of mining power to a seven-day high of $119. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission SEC, has leveled charges against Shapeshift Ad, accusing the company of operating without proper registration. This case has ignited a broader conversation on the regulatory framework for crypto assets, with SEC Commissioners Hester Pierce and Mark Laieta voicing their dissent and concerns about the SEC's current approach toward crypto regulation. That has been extraordinarily successful, but Bitcoin, it's like Bitcoin didn't have a website, right? Bitcoin didn't have a website for institutional investors, and about a month ago, Bitcoin all of a sudden became something you type it into, you know, your Bloomberg, you type it into your Robinhood app, or you type it into any stock e-trade or any stock trading app, instant, instant information you can buy, you can sell. And of course, those, those ETF tickers, they don't just give people, you know, perfect awareness and ability to transact. That's also uh, the global protocol for trading volatility or for issuing credit. So if I had a bunch of money in uh, Bitcoin and I wanted to get a loan against it, it might take me a month or two months to find someone that'll give me a loan. Then I have to move the Bitcoin. Then I have to pay double the interest rate that's normal. And that's kind of scary. But after the ETF, people could have the, the same economic value in Bitcoin with JP Morgan or Merrill Lynch or Bank of America. And they could just say to this broker or banker they've been doing business with, like, um, I bought a house. I want a big mortgage on it, and I'm going to post a little bit of my Bitcoin as our securities as down payment against that mortgage, and I use it to get a mortgage, or I use it to get a margin loan, or maybe I could use it, I could hedge against it. And so, so these ETFs opened up an entire financial world of uh, awareness and opportunity and functionality to the 99% mainstream investors. And you really can't underestimate just how profoundly important that is to the, uh, to the entire network. A U.S. district judge has sided with the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, in a ruling that declares the trading of certain crypto assets on secondary markets to be securities transactions. This decision emerged from an insider trading case involving crypto exchange Coinbase's former product manager, Eshin Wagi, his brother, Nikhil Wagi, and their friend, Samir Romani. Bitcoin whales, the entities that own large amounts of the cryptocurrency. While banks and investment firms are becoming more prominent in the Bitcoin market, there are also other players such as exchanges, miners, early adopters, and anonymous holders. Michael Saylor praised the success of BlackRock and Fidelity's Bitcoin ETF at the Madeira Bitcoin conference. Newly launched Bitcoin ETF have attracted $8.5 billion in net inflows in less than two months. Saylor describes Bitcoin ETF as a universal API for investors, simplifying access to Bitcoin and integrating it into traditional financial transactions. If you've been with us so far, a big thank you. Don't forget to subscribe for free to Bitcoin Zella for your daily news. The link is waiting below. That's all for today's crypto news. Stick around for more updates, insights, and analysis on cryptocurrencies. Share your thoughts in the comments, like this video, and subscribe for more exciting content.